Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at the suggestions passed to the developers for November 2023. Now, since this came out a few weeks ago, one of the suggestions has already been added, the F-15J Eagle for Japan, especially after last month they passed the F-15DJ Eagle. Uh, so we will be covering it anyway, just to give you a general history of it, but understand, it's already in the game. Uh, also, we're going to be missing out on the Piaggio P133, but if you want to check it out, there uh, will be a link in the description, so you can check out all the different stuff from this video. Let's get into it and see what was passed to the developers. The first vehicle is for America, and it is the F-8J Crusader. This was the most capable version of the famed Vietnam-era carrier-based fighter jet, and it was the main fighter crusader in Vietnam during 1971 and also 1972, which were the last years of the war. They were born out of the success of the F-8E in French aeronaval service, which was known as the F-8E FN. Vought began remanufacturing FADs up to the FN standard early in 1968. It featured several improvements, including strengthened wings, improved landing gear, and a resting hook up to the A7 standard, and a boundary layer control system, featuring double droop full span leading edge along the wing, which greatly helped in landing the aircraft as it lowered the approach speed. Carried over from the FADFN was a larger horizontal stabilizer. Other improvements included a more powerful engine, the PNW J57P420, an improved pulse Doppler ANAPQ124 radar, the ANASA-63 missile acquisition programmer, the ECM bulge near the top of the vertical stabilizer, and also external wet pylons for additional fuel tanks. So, basically, there was a lot of internal systems that would make it better, but also at the same time would benefit in War Thunder. A better engine and a better radar is always nice. It could carry the standard stuff for Colt Mark 12s and also aim 9 b C, D, or even G sidewinders, which could be nice. For Britain, we have the Folland Nat F1. The Folland Nat, I believe, has been passed a few times, but I'm always happy to chat about it because the Nat was designed by the popular aircraft designer W.E.W. Petter, famous for designing the Canberra and early design of the Lightning. As a follow-on from Folland's private venture prototype, the Folland Midge, to meet the RES requirements for a light jet fighter laid out in OR-303. The Nat's design allowed its maintenance and construction to be carried out without the use of specialized tools, making it ideal for countries that were still developing their industry, such as a recently independent India at the time. The Nat is seen as playing a major role towards the issuing of the NATO NBMR1 requirement, which sought to create a standardized light strike slash attack fighter for all NATO nations' air forces to equip. A competition, the G91, would actually go on to win. Whilst never used by the RAF as a fighter, only being tested and evaluated, the two-seater Nat T1 was used as a trainer for some time, earning fame through being the main aircraft used by the Red Arrows display team until its retirement in 1979. The F1 did, however, see use in the air forces of Finland, Yugoslavia, and also most predominantly India, where it earned its nickname Saber Slayer from downing Pakistani F-86 Sabres in the Second and Third Indo-Pakistani Wars. The Nats also earned slight fame in fiction, depicting the carrier-based Oscar EW5894 Phallus tactical fighter bomber in the 1991 comedy film Hot Shots. The next one is the Mitsubishi F-15J, which is already in the game, but also it's nice having a look at its history. Basically, in 1975, the Japanese MOD examined the US F-15 as a potential candidate to replace the aging F-104J and also F-4EJ aircraft in service with the JSDF. A F-15C was evaluated at Edwards Airfield Base, and in December of 1975, the F-15 was picked as the winner. The purchase of the F-15 was further strengthened when, in 1976, Viktor Belenko 
defected to Japan, where ground radar stations spotted the MiG-25, but due to bad weather and also lack of stronger radars, lost the MiG-25. Even worse, F-4EJ sent to intercept failed to locate the MiG-25 due to lack of PD radar, which did not let it have a good look down performance. After the incident, the need for a more advanced fighter with stronger radar was now a priority, something that the F-15 provided. So by 1978, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries was designated as the contractor and licensing was provided for the F-15C and also D. In 1980, the first F-15J, which was built in St. Louis, made its maiden flight and sent to Japan, and by 1984, F-15Js began replacing the F-104J. As of 2023, there are still some pre-MSIP F-15Js that have not received MSIP upgrades and are now being replaced by F-35As. The F-15J pre-MSIPs are basically early US F-15Cs, with a few equipments not provided and replaced with domestic ones, such as including the JAPR-4 radar warning receiver, ANALE-45J chaff and also flare dispensers, and JASW-10 badge automatic warning and control organization data link systems, and the JALQ-8 electronic countermeasure suite. Other than that, they're almost identical. For China, we have the J-12 and also the J-12I. The Nanchang J-12 uh, was a project which was launched after the failure of the more ambitious J-11 project in 1969, which required STOL light fighter jets to be able to take off and participate in air guerrilla warfare under harsh one ray conditions. The first non-afterburner engine production variant was created in 1970, the normal takeoff weight of the J-12 is 4,450 kilos, while the empty weight was only 3,100, occupying the title of lightest supersonic fighter in the world. Due to its lightweight body, relatively high TW ratio, and relatively good acceleration, even using the original non-afterburner engine, the Wobon WP-6B Chinese-produced Tomansky RD-9BF-811, it can still produce a good TW ratio, with the engine producing 3,454 kgf. This allows the aircraft to reach a maximum speed of 1.22 Mach at 10,800 meters. The aircraft exhibits good maneuverability, with a continuous turning radius of 1,140 meters at 5,000 meters. It is equipped with two AAMs, PL2 or PL5, one door 23mm and one door 30mm Type 30 China NR30. Due to its small size, intake design and low weight design, it's not equipped with a radar. Then you have the J12i. The improved engine of the J12, named the 12i, replaces the previous one with an afterburner Woburn WP6Z engine. The engine outputs a maximum thrust of 4050 kgf, uh, during afterburner, increasing its maximum speed to 1.386 Mach, but also reducing its non-afterburner maximum speed to 0.95, as its non-afterburner engine thrust is reduced to 2500. Engine improvements like this have also modified the nose with an impact cone to improve its high-speed aerodynamics and engine performance. In the new nose cone, it's equipped with a small radio ranging device that can be used for ground attacks, and this also significant increases in acceleration. At an altitude of 5,000 meters, it can accelerate from 0.9 to 1.2 Mach in 65 seconds. The F5A in the US takes 140 seconds to accelerate from 0.9 to 1.2, and this improved version also adds an AM under the fuselage, bringing a total number of missiles it can carry to three. For France, we have the Dassault Rafai BF41, and I always like calling this thing the Raphael. I know it's not, but it's just much easier to say. I'll call it the Rafai. Basically, after the decision in 1987 to develop the A variant into a series aircraft, the contract for development with an industry consortium was signed on the 21st of April 1988. In addition to Dassault, this consisted of Thompson CSF and Snecma. For further testing, four near-series prototypes were built, which were equipped with extensive test instrumentation. 
The first to take off was the only C-01 single-seat aircraft. A second prototype of the single-seater was cancelled on the 19th of May, 91. On the 12th of December, 91, and the 8th of November, 93, respectively, the two naval single-seater prototypes, the Rafai M01 and 02, flew for the first time. On the 30th of April, 93, the only two-seater, the prototype 01, took off for its maiden flight, the B-01. In the summer of 92, the M01 was moved to the U.S. Naval Air Station Lakehurst to test catapult launches on the test catapult there. The French carriers use American catapult technology. In April of the following year, the first real porter operation finally took place on the Foch. In 1993, the first prototype of the RBE-2 radar, which had been developed since 1989, was, de was delivered. In addition, the first weapon tests with the Cannon and the Magic 2s were carried out in March of that year. Two years later, a MICAEM was fired from the Rafai for the first time, and in 1996, the first shot at a moving target followed with a Matra Magic 2. Also, from 96, the M881 engines were replaced by the production variants, the M882E1, and that defense system Spectra integrated. Tests with particularly heavy loads, three 2,000 liter auxiliary tanks, four air to air missiles, and two Apache, real world tests with the Spectra, multi target air to air missile firing, and integration of the production configuration of the RBE2 followed in 1997. The Rafi B is the tandem seat version of the family. The two seats were covered by a one-piece canopy that hinged open to the right. The Rafi B is fully equipped with operational kits and the control layout of, for the front and back seats made as similar as possible to ensure maximum operational flexibility. It has an empty weight about 350 kilos greater than the Rafi C and less internal fuel capacity. The literally brand new F41 standard brings with it a number of technical and software improvements, including improvements of the Talios TGP. The highlights of the new standard, however, are the complete integration of the AASM 1000, which was previously only used on test beds with the F34 Plus standard for testing purposes, but is now to be included as standard in the Rafai armament. Another highlight is the integration of the Scorpion helmets with HMCS, which provides the pilots with a QOL update and enables off-ball launching of the Mika and the future planned Mika NG for the F-42. Further improvements with the F-41 standard, the LAM, the third-party missile aircraft link for Meteor, newer and larger side screen in the cockpit, major electronics updates and next-generation sensor channels for OFS. Also new with this standard are new jammers, which are mounted on SP3 together with the additional Mika rails, as well as other technical innovations that are really not relevant uh, for good old War Thunder. The Rafai's armament is expanded by almost every standard. The F41 standard is one of the most modern and brought many changes with it. In terms of armaments, the MBDA Meteor, GBU 16, Mark 81, 82, 83 bombs, and the AM31 Block 2 mod ASHM are available with this standard. But what is already there should not be underestimated. Since the AASM is a guidance and range increase kit, it can come with multiple variants and different purpose fillers, as each kit is mounted in front and behind of the conventional 250 to 1000 kilo bomb, the Hammer V1, or the BLU-126, the Hammer V4. Four Meteors and four Mikas is not possible though, as of now due technical limitations as of today. Two Meteors and six Mika is the best missile uh, config uh, according to the post. It can carry pretty much everything that you would ever want uh, in a Rafai, meaning it is, of course, one of the best versions. The last one is for the Lockheed Hudson Mark IV-A, which would be, of course, for the Israelis. We're just going to have a look at the service uh, in Israeli Air Forces, because this has been passed before in other iterations where we've had a look at how it was acquired and where it came from. Basically, after arriving in Israel, Hudson VHB1H was serialized with the IF number 2601, and presumably displayed either it or the suffix 01 later in service. The Israelis saw the Hudson as an exceptionally useful aircraft to have both as transport and, as the Israelis viewed it, a medium bomber. 
The aircraft served during the war initially under the Air Transport Command and later under the 106th Squadron operating from Ekron Air Base. A concentrated effort was taken during the first month of service to get the Hudson to a flight-worthy state. The Arab-Israeli war was still raging on, and so the priority was to turn Hudson 2601 back into a bomber. During its civilization in Australia, the Hudson was stripped of its bomber site, bomb-loading gear, as well as the gunner's turrets and also guns. By December, the aircraft was considered flightworthy, and while it likely never got any of its machine gun armament back, it was functional once again for the bombing role. According to at least one source, the Hudson was fitted for a carriage of 798 kilo bomb load, putting it on par with operational Hudsons of the Second World War in terms of bomb armament. The Hudson 2601 managed to get involved in combat during the very late stages of the 48-49 Arab-Israeli War, carrying out a few bombing sorties in the war. The most notable operation this aircraft took place in was Operation Uvda in March of 1949, which was the final operation in the war and saw Israel face off against the Kingdom of Jordan for control of the southern Negev Desert. On the first day of this operation, the 5th of March 1949, Hudson 2601 crashed, seemingly beyond recovery, ending its service with the Israeli forces. During and after the war, the Israeli Air Forces acquired three additional Hudsons, however those were Mark III's and Mark III-A variants, and were never used by the Israelis as combat aircraft, but rather as transports. The Israeli Air Force withdrew all these remaining Hudsons by 1954. So it could be another vehicle added to the Israeli tech tree. Hopefully, at some point, we'll see a few more in those lower BRs. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Bereen, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sem Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R., and also Lafouche for supporting the channel.